All right, so I've converted an old Honda Goldwing, which has a twin rear shock suspension to a monoshock suspension. And as I've been doing this, I've gotten a few comments on other people that are doing the same thing or very similar thing. And one aspect of this conversion, I have another video, which I'll link up here about my thought process on all this stuff. And there's more to it than just this spring aspect. But today I want to talk about springs, a very simple way of customizing the spring because you can get um, an old shock with the spring and everything off of an other, another bike for these sorts of conversions. But because it's a custom application, you're probably gonna want a different spring rate. And you can swap out the springs really easy on these shocks and inexpensively. And I wanna show you how to do that, just as an FYI. So as an example, I've got this shock, which I did not use on my project. I thought about using this and I decided to use a different shock. Now that I know how to do this, I might have gone with this shock. So what I did is I got a used shock like this and I just swapped out the spring in here for a different spring rate, a heavier or lighter spring depending on your application and what you need. And so the first thing I wanna talk about here is how to swap out the springs. On this one, there's an adjustment up here and on the very top of this guy, there are these two plates. You can see how they're separated right there and there. So there's a plate on this side and a plate on that side. And basically how this shock comes apart is that you need to get spring compressors. So there's little tools that go on either side, hold on to the spring and then compress it down for you on either side. And then that compresses the whole shock down and releases the pressure on these plates up on top here and allows you to take those plates off. And once those plates are off, this whole adjustment part up here will just slide right off the end and then the spring can slide off the end and then you can throw on a new spring. On this particular shock, you might be able to tell that it is, it's tapered. It's actually smaller down here than it is up here. And so one consideration for this shock itself is that you'd also need to get, in addition to a spring, you need to get bigger collars, which is this guy down here. And you may need to get a bigger collar up on here as well. You can see there's a, you can see right here, that's the collar on the top part and the bottom. It's just this big fat one here is the collar. And that's basically just the collars are what holds the spring. That's what the spring comes in contact with and those hold the spring on to the shock. And the reason you would need to get collars for this specific shock is because it's tapered. Because the, coil, because the coils are smaller down here than they are up here, you're going to need a wider collar down here because these aftermarket springs that you can order are not tapered. They're straight springs. They just go straight down They're the same width on the bottom as they are on the top. And so if you put one of those springs on here, you're going to need a wider collar on the bottom in order to accommodate the wider coil. So I ended up using an Eibach spring on my bike, on my application, and I'll show you that one right now. All right, so this is the spring that I ended up using on my bike. You can see this is a much heavier duty spring on here, and it's a much heavier duty spring than what was came on this shock. And so this shock is a different setup. If you can see on this shock, and this shock is, you know, it attaches right here and it attaches down here. There's a big difference on this, this shock than the other one we just looked at was that on the bottom, you've got a collar set up down there and there's really not much going on down there. And then your adjustment on this one, you've got these two big adjustment nuts on there. And so in order to get this spring off, you literally just loosen these nuts all the way and they all slide off the threaded part here and up into here. And then you go down to this part down here where the collar is and you cannot see it at the moment, but once that spring is loose, it slides back a little bit and you'll be able to slide this stuff back a little bit and you'll have access. There's a big circlip in there that you'll then be able to pull that circlip off and then the whole collar will come off and the spring will come right off the end there. And that is how you get the spring off this style shock. Now this one, I did not have to get new collars for this. You may have to get a collar though, depending on what shock you're using and what spring you're using. All right, but then how do you know what size spring to get? So what I ended up using on my bike was an eight inch by two and a half by a thousand pound spring. So, and this is how iBox sells their springs. And so when you're looking up stuff specifically, searching for it on the internet, this is really helpful um, format to use where that 
the 800 over here represents the length of the spring, so that's eight inches. And then this represents the width of the, of the coils, that's two, two and a half inches. And this is the weight of the spring, the spring rate. And so that is a thousand pounds per inch. So that's what I ended up buying. But how did I know that that was the size I needed? And so that's the big question. And so what I did, I took the spring off my shock and then measured it. And by measuring it, I knew that it was eight inches tall. And then I used some calipers to measure the inside diameter here and figured out that it was two and a half inches inside. And that way I was able to figure out what size spring I needed to order. The spring rate, that, well, that was kind of a guess, an educated guess, but a guess. So for example, this spring, if I wanted to get a new spring for this shock here, I would measure this guy out and, and on the shock it measures about five and a half inches, but that's compressed on here. So it's probably a six inch shock. I won't know for sure until I take this off of here. And then same deal with the width of it. It looks like it's about, it's two and a quarter or two and a half, but let's say it's a six inch by two and a quarter inch spring on here. And so if I were to go to order this, I would go ahead and type in this code, this format here, where I would do 0600 for six inches, 225 for two and a quarter inches, and then whatever spring rate I need. The one company I could find that would do this stuff for you is I'll link in the description of this video. Their website is uh, Race Tech. They specifically do suspensions for motorcycles. If you are not poor like me, you can just take your used shock and send it into them and say, oh, I need a higher spring rate on my shock. And they'll swap out the springs and do all that stuff for you. But you still are gonna have to have an idea of what spring rate you need. And if you're doing a custom suspension, monoshock conversion, that's gonna be a tough question to answer. So this may be the best bet in terms of figuring out on your own. It'll certainly be the cheapest way, gets you close to what you need but you may end up spending a little bit more than you'd like by having to buy more than one spring. So hopefully this saves you some time because what if I were to do this project again, I would not have wasted so much time trying to find a stock shop with the exact correct spring rate to it because the spring rate information is not out there for stock shocks and so you cannot, and so that's a big hassle trying to figure that out. I would have just found a shock that was the right length and dimensions for my project and then swapped out the spring as needed to make everything work. And so that's my recommendation to you. Good luck on your projects. I hope they come out awesome, just how you hoped. And keep on wrenching everybody. We'll see you next time.